Well, I understand that some bed bugs have been found at the United Nations building in New York, which is unfortunate, but some good may come of it, you never know. Maybe somebody could find a place for them on the Human Rights Council. They might help to elevate the integrity of that forum somewhat. Yes, it's that time of year again when members of the cartel of third world dictatorships known as the Organisation of Islamic Congress take time out from brutalising their own people to force through a resolution at the Human Rights Council against what they call the defamation of religions, by which they mean telling the truth about Islam and the countries where it calls the shots. They say they want to stop people wrongly associating their religion with terrorism and human rights violations. But I don't think anyone does. I think people correctly associate Islam with those things. I certainly do, but then what do I know? All I've got to go on is overwhelming evidence. Also, at the risk of sounding like a racist, xenophobic, hate-mongering, Nazi fascist bigot, it does seem to me that allowing Islamic countries onto a human rights council is like having a bunch of mafiosi on a parole board. They've already made it perfectly clear that human rights don't apply to them if they conflict with Sharia, which of course they always do, because civilization conflicts with Sharia. In a sane world, these countries wouldn't even be allowed to look in the direction of a human rights council, let alone serve on one. We're talking about places like Saudi Arabia, where you can be executed for witchcraft, and where pubescent girls are married off to middle-aged perverts incapable of forming a normal relationship because of their religion. Or Iran, which executes children, and where you can be stoned to death for getting into the wrong relationship. Or Sudan, where slavery is practiced by Muslims over non-Muslims, where the government has murdered millions of its own people, and where the president is an indicted war criminal. We're talking about places dominated by bloodthirsty clerics who embrace the brutality of Sharia so enthusiastically you get the impression they enjoy seeing people mutilated and murdered and their religion is just a convenient excuse. Scripture sodden oafs who seem to compete with each other to see who can issue the most fatuous fatwa, degrading and humiliating women as much as possible. Recently, for example, one Saudi scholar declared that women could associate with men they aren't related to by breastfeeding them, which would technically make them their sons. Resourceful or around the twist? Answers on a postcard to the king of Saudi Arabia. Another Saudi scholar is on record as saying that women should have to cover themselves so completely that only one eye is visible. What, a whole eye? How shameless. Well, that's the modern world for you. No doubt he would agree with the Iranian scholar who earlier this year made the extraordinary statement that immodestly dressed women are the cause of earthquakes, no less. Some of these guys really do have a very serious problem with women, don't they? I mean, this is way beyond anything you'd call a simple neurosis and deep into hardcore mental illness. It's a shame that Allah, for all his omnipotence, doesn't seem to know any good psychiatrists. If the Saudis couldn't dig money straight out of the ground, they'd still be living in the Stone Age, as would the entire Arab world, which has produced absolutely nothing of value to humanity for centuries, thanks to a suffocating religion that fosters insularity and ignorance, not to mention a chronic and crippling sexual repression that makes Catholicism look like San Francisco in the 1960s. And the damage this does can be seen in many places in the Islamic world, not least in the country of Pakistan, which is not strictly speaking an Islamic dictatorship, but it might as well be. It's a democracy, a fragile and corrupt democracy with nuclear weapons. Great. It's also a very Islamic country. How Islamic? Blasphemy carries the death penalty and it doesn't get any more Islamic than that. Indeed, right at this moment, a woman is awaiting death by hanging because she happens to get into an argument with some Muslims who promptly accused her of blasphemy. That's how Islamic Pakistan is. In fact, it's such an Islamic country that 80% of Pakistani women are regularly beaten by their husbands and in the area around the city of Karachi, a woman is murdered every day. However, the Pakistani government is less concerned about these cowardly atrocities than it is about religious offence, taking care to block websites critical of Islam because they don't want anyone's morals corrupted. Meanwhile, Pakistan distinguishes itself on the internet by leading the world in Google searches for animal sex, child sex and rape sex. Normal, consensual sex between human adults is apparently something of a minority taste in that devout country, according to Google. Now, given all this, you might be surprised to hear that both Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have recently been appointed to the board of the new United Nations Agency for Women. Yes, that's right. 
I said women. Both of these countries will be doing all they can to work for the empowerment and the equality of women all over the world. Isn't that great news? And how wonderfully inclusive of the United Nations to hand the fox the keys to the hen house yet again. Yes, OK, these countries may well treat women like dogs, but hey, that's their culture, right? And we've got to respect it, don't we? I mean, who are we to judge after all? I mean, it's all just relative anyway, isn't it? I mean, just because a thing is insane and barbaric and downright evil, does that necessarily make it wrong? I mean, who are we to judge? Surely we're not arrogant enough to assume that our values are superior just because they're more civilised or that their values are somehow less valid just because we've got stringent laws against them. And that would be disrespectful and most intolerant and quite probably racist. No, no. In the spirit of mutual understanding and tolerance and respect and harmony and bridge building and all the other bullshit buzzwords of the new PC totalitarianism, we simply have to accept that brutalizing half of humanity for the sake of pathetically inadequate male egos and primitive superstition is just part of the rich tapestry, the rich diversity of cultures and faiths that so enrich us all. Isn't that right? Well, isn't it? You know those bedbugs at the United Nations? I shouldn't worry too much about them. I think they'll leave of their own accord when they realise the company they're keeping. Peace out, everybody.